here at behind at Night Train Behind the Dreams. Um, we have uh, Daniel Joseph, who is a principal illusion integrator at Walt Disney Imagineering. And uh, special effects are, you know, what do they do? They since the opening day of Disneyland. Curious guests have been asking, how did they do that? The answer is often special effects or illusions that inspire those moments that are. From the Pepper's Ghost effect that has captivated generations of guests in the Haunted Mansion to the playful ramifications of ordering a shipwreck on the rocks at Trader Sam's Enchanted Tiki Bar. Special effects have been helping Disney create truly magical experiences for decades. So we have the honor of the amazing Daniel Joseph. So Daniel is a, like I said earlier, a principal illusion and creator at Walt Disney Imagineering, where he helps to conceive, design, and install a range of special effects and illusions for Disney parks around the world. Daniel is listed as an inventor on over 38 Disney patents, and last year, Daniel had the high honor of being inducted into the 2023 Florida Inventor Hall of Fame. Good job. Now, Daniel was one of the key team members who brought to life the Pat Box Ghost for the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland's 60th anniversary. And the late Disney legend Marty Sklar wrote about Daniel in all three of his books. Wow. Daniel first got his start at Disney when he won first prize in Walt Disney Imagineering's Imagination's Design Competition in 2006, which I recommend everyone check out. Uh, since then, Daniel has enjoyed over 17 years with Walt Disney Imagineering in Glendale. Seven years ago, he relocated from California to Orlando, where he leads a team of designers in the Illusion Development Lab at Walt Disney Imagineering in Florida. Daniel enjoys his magical Florida life with his wife and Marina, his nine-year-old and four-year-old boys, and of course, his coffee ears that's in town. Yeah. 
Yale Grayson did was an incredibly elegant solution that's really in a small space and lit it in a certain way that it looks kind of like your mind's eye version of what rain is supposed to look like. And for me, that's when the real world of illusion design, illusion development started here at the Disney Imagineering event. And another turning point was, of course, Pirates of the Caribbean, which opened in 1967. Uh, everyone knows the burning scene here, uh, or the, the city burning scene. And what's so funny about the scene is we all we all know the, the effect in here uh, of the flames and everything moving around. But when this first opened in 1967, the Anaheim Fire Brigade was called because there was a fire that broke out in that new pirates ride. They all came over, they all came over and checked it out and noticed, hey, what if this is just some lights and some fans moving things around? It's no fire. So that was kind of a little, you know, pat on the back of Yale that he did something really cool. <laughs> but again, um, in the past, in theater and illusion design, these kinds of things have never been done. Um, so Yale was really uh, breaking through to new ground with that. In the next slide, I think is the ultimate turning point for illusion development at Walt Disney Imagineering, of course, the Haunted Mansion. And uh, everyone knows this scene. This scene for me, as a young child going through, kind of like uh, a pinnacle. You know, I, I saw this, was looking around, trying to figure out how it was done. Um, but I think it changed the world in a lot of ways, uh, as well as the singing bus at the bottom, which to this day, which is pretty amazing, is cataloged and known as the first use of projection mapping in the world. Um, dates back to this uh, for illusion design and special effects historians. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so how does that does that work apply to different levels and different scales that you know serve the park in different ways? Well, so that's a, a great question. I think the important thing that uh, we try to express in our booth over there, but also here, is that we start out with mock-ups. An in-house uh, Jessica, who's an audience over there, is on the team. She works on them too. And, 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 um, we start out small and we like to play with hot glue, foam core tape, wires, basically the same things that many of us in the group did as kids, we do today. But we start small and figure out these ideas so we can iterate and really improve upon them and figure out what they can become. So here's Jessica creating an illusion of uh, artificial flames and artificial fire here. But again, starting with simple materials to prove out an idea because really our medium is three dimensions. Right? You can do a drawing, you can do a sketch, but if you show people what you know in a three-dimensional and simple form, you get people excited about it, you get people you know, on board with what this crazy idea could be. Yeah. Tell us more about the hat box ghost. Yes, so kind of moving out of our process here, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the results of that process is it was the hat box ghost. But that all started uh, earlier with mock-ups, and this is an idea Yale Gracie installed the hat box in 1969. There was always supposed to be two because we built two of everything for our Florida haunted mansion, which would open two years after our California mansion. And since the effect wasn't quite living up to our, our uh, perfection and our standards, it was taken out. And come over 45 years later, we figured out a new way to do it, building again on Yale's legacy and we're able to, um, able to really crack that nut. But to prove it to everyone, and to show everyone again that I'm excited about it, we built a mock-up. And this is that mock-up here. As, as crude as, crude as it is, I want to show you guys this mock-up. Uh, you can see it working. So again, very simple, made from funny parts and pieces. And if you turn on the lights, you'd see a lot of tape and wires and things sticking around. <laughs> but it proved out the idea. This is communication, right? Another way to communicate. Uh, so that's how we, we kind of got there. And then, of course, uh, the really cool thing was we found the original mold for the Atbox Ghost Head, uh, which was in storage in what we call our, um, our mold board. It's just like you mold and put things together. And that's that. And we 3D scanned that original mold that was sculpted in the 60s to create the face that was ultimately installed in the attraction. 
this over here on your left side is how um, you are figuring out to do this disappearance of this head. So let's see here. Next, uh, I wanted to show you guys this. Next, I wanted to show you guys another mock-up that, again, humble beginnings. You can see a version of it over there in the booth. But has anyone been to Tokyo and seen the Beauty and the Beast attraction? Uh, you see that? With, with the beast transforming into the prince right in front of your eyes. That started all as an idea in a brainstorm. So we went away, got some dolls, got some parts and pieces, and of course, some magic expertise and know-how, and created a mock-up and an initial prototype. And this is actually what kind of kicked off the project, the idea, hey, we could pull this thing off that we really had a lot of trouble figuring out in the past. So showing the process, from there we built a much bigger mock-up that was built uh, with our friends in the model shop to scale, about eight feet wide, so actually very big. And then we figured out a few more things. But then we went to the field, and you can see here what was ultimately installed.